documentary that I reviewed was King Corn. This 2007 film was directed by Aaron Wolf and stars Ian Chaney and Kurt Ellis. The three produced this documentary to explore corn's role in Americans' diets. Specifically, Ian explains at the start of the film that he had recently learned some disturbing information. For the first time in American history, their generation was at risk of having a shorter lifespan than their parents, and it was because of what they ate. The main theme of this film is that the government policy and improved farming processes have driven down the price of corn so much that the use of corn in America's food supply has risen dramatically. The film starts with Ian and Kurt visiting Professor Stephen Macko from the University of Virginia. Professor Macko analyzes Ian and Kurt's hair to determine their diet. Professor Macko explains that the basic source of Ian and Kurt's diet is corn. The filmmakers explain that the source of corn in America's diet is not the corn on the cob we buy at the farmer's market, like this one here. It is mostly from high fructose corn syrup that is in just about all processed foods and in the meat we eat because the use of corn as feed. The documentarians take an interesting approach to presenting their film. The basic story is that Ian and Kurt are best friends from college who have decided to move from Boston to Iowa to get a better idea where the food they consume on a daily basis actually comes from. Upon relocating to Iowa, they purchase a one acre portion of some farmland and then set out to take the viewer through the entire process of seeding, fertilizing, using weed killer, and harvesting. After harvest, Ian and Kurt want to trace the use of their corn. They follow corn into the food systems in America. They explain that their acre of land should yield about 10,000 pounds of corn. Of that 10,000 pounds, they explain that 32% is exported outside of the U.S. or is converted into ethanol for use as fuel, so it does not go into the U.S. food system. A portion is used to produce sugar for use in sweeteners. But the big surprise is the use of corn as feed for animals. Over 50% of the corn that is harvested is used as feed for animals. The film does educate the viewer regarding the wonderful progress the American farm community has made in becoming more efficient in growing crops. Further, they explore some of the complexities of farming in the U.S. In particular, the need to create larger farms to increase the efficiency. This is pushing out the small family farms in favor of the large corporate farms. There is a somewhat sad section of the film showing farm auction. During the section concerning the government subsidies, the filmmakers were able to obtain an interview with Earl Butts, former secretary under Nixon for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Butts was one of the government officials at the center of developing our current farm subsidy program. In summary, Butts thought that the previous U.S. policy of paying farmers not to grow crops was a bad idea. With respect to corn, the filmmakers show that government subsidies now pay farmers to grow crops. In fact, they give a simple presentation of the fact that without the subsidy, most farmers would not be able to produce corn profitably. But, they explain, this program has led to a tremendous increase in corn production and has driven down the price of corn. This low price has increased demand and the use of corn for sugar, fuel, feed, etc. Seems like a vicious circle. Government subsidy drives down price and increases demand. This chart was used by Ian to explain that without the government subsidy, they would lose money growing and selling corn on their one acre. In summary, the corn could be sold for $1.65 per bushel or $330 for a 200 bushel yield from their acre. The cost of growing corn on that acre was estimated at roughly $350. The government subsidy is what allows the farmers to generate a profit. According to the filmmakers, since the Bud's era policies went into effect, corn prices have continued to drop and the production of corn has risen dramatically. The most important fact that this film reveals is the shift in the type of corn that is grown today versus 40 years ago. The filmmakers explain that the vast majority of corn in the U.S. today is not really edible. They explain that the corn tastes like cardboard 
and is only useful for feeding livestock, or that it must be processed before it can be used as sweetener. Further, the filmmakers explain that the corn grown today is really only grown for the starch. The corn has been engineered to reduce the protein portion of the kernel and increase the starch portion. To me, the most important aspect of the film was the use of corn in feed. I knew of corn's use to sweeten all sorts of products. I've already been previously exposed to that information. The whole section concerning the use of corn as feed for cattle was, quite frankly, disturbing. Aside from the animal rights issues regarding the negative effects that come from the acidosis from a corn-based diet, the filmmakers present facts that indicate the dramatic increase in the use of corn has weakened America's food supply. In the process of making meat cheaper, the country has made the meat more fatty and less nutritious. Even with the clever presentation of the material in this film, it is evident that the filmmakers have a bias that the increase in the use of corn in Americans' diet is a bad thing. They do a good job of showing the benefit to the farmers that grow the corn, but they do not have another point of view in the film regarding whether or not corn is really the root of diet problems in America. There is a section showing the very negative effects of high fructose corn syrup and its role in increasing Americans' obesity and the related rise in diabetes. There is no alternative view presented. There is a great quote from one of the nutritionists presented in the film discussing the negative effects of government policies. We subsidize the Happy Meals, but we don't subsidize the healthy ones. I would recommend this film. Assuming the information presented regarding the portion of U.S. corn crops dedicated to non-food sources and the decline in the nutritional value is accurate, this documentary shines a light on a growing problem. The connection the filmmakers make between the government policies on corn production and the decline in the health of consumers of the cheap sugar source is compelling. After watching this film, I started checking the labels on all sorts of products. Just as noted in the film, high fructose corn syrup is in everything. The major weakness of the film, from my perspective, was the explanation of what specifically caused this problem and what could be done to fix the problem. The filmmakers do a decent job of showing that government policies may have started the U.S. down this path, but it is still not clear to me where exactly the U.S. policy problem originated. Finally, the film shows that there are literally entire communities that have been built around this corn-based industry. It seems evident that any fundamental change would be disruptive to these communities. Because the current government subsidy sounds like support for food, it would seem difficult to ob obtain support for a change. Maybe that is why the filmmakers steered clear of any solutions. Maybe there are no easy solutions. Or maybe they have a planned sequel.